Next question is from Eric Lundholm. When trying to switch into a career or of personal training from something else, what's more important, getting a degree in a related field, working on certifications, or just getting started coaching for free to gain experience? Okay, I'll add one right mm. there. The most valuable thing you could do communication is well. Besides that, is uh, uh, getting a mentor. Mm. There, I can't think of anything that will give you more bang for your buck in terms of becoming a good trainer. If you're becoming a new trainer and you can find an experienced coach or trainer who will let you follow them around oh, and yeah. maybe in trade for doing their paperwork or putting away their weights or you know confirming their appointments or whatever, just follow them around, watch what they do, hear how they talk, you know, let somebody experience mentor you. That's more valuable than all those things, uh, you know, that we listed. But of those things that you listed, you know, I would say certified, and then you know, start to get experience because a degree is a it's expensive and it's long. Yeah. Not saying it's not valuable, but geez, for the time and the money that you spend, you know, I don't know if it's I, I can't see it being more valuable than certifications plus experience. Well, to kind of piggyback on that, I think that there's a way to do that too. If you don't know like somebody that's like a really good mentor or like personal trainer, but you there's a gym where you know a really like awesome personal trainer that you respect and and you know hire them hire them spend your money uh you know having them take you through programming and and explain it and uh you, you know go through that process to see how you know the, the inner workings of the whole thing and and see if they're comfortable with doing that mm -hmm. i'm sure they would be uh they'd be happy to get your business for that that'd be like a good start for uh, you know, at least kind of getting a feel for what what it requires. Uh, you know, by doing it that way. Well, you you need a, a minimum of a certification or degree to like become one, right? So you have to have at least one to get going, right? One national mm -hmm. certification or a or a degree in the field to at least get started. But then after that, I would actually say that the experience trumps everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, th this is my experience at least. Um, I didn't have a lot coming into it. I had a certification. That's I got one certification to get started. And then, every, and then just got got in, got into it, the trade, started doing it. And then as I would run into things, and here's the mistake I think some trainers make is they're so afraid because they don't have a lot of experience and knowledge yet. So they're timid to go, go take on a client, but that's okay. You just got to be okay with saying, hey, I, I don't know, but I'll find out for you. Mm -hmm. And so most of my career, I spent the first five to six years at least saying that a lot and then go back and do my research. So I run into a situation, I've never, and here's the thing too. You can have all the certifications and all the degrees in the world, and it still will not prepare you for every situation you're going to run into mm -hmm. in real life. There's just there's so many variables, and we're so unique, and we're all so different that you're going to have to handle it case by case. So as you, I think nothing is going to trump the, getting into the trade, like other trades too. I mean, yeah. that's very similar to almost anything else. Yeah, totally. you get degrees and certifications, but until you get in there and start working with those people, you have no idea what you're going to run into. And when you do, you go home, and that's why I'd go home after that, and then next thing you know, I'd be reading books and trying to learn more about whatever I was dealing with, and then I'd apply it. And then before you know it, after you've been doing that for years, you're going to have gone through a lot of the similar type of situations. And if you've done your due diligence every time you cross that path or cross that scenario and you go and you learn and you read about it, to me, that's one of the, and, and then why that's so important is because the part that isn't listed on here that I shouted out, which is communication, yeah. is it's just going to get you that practice on how to communicate that information. Yeah. You, uh, another thing that I had a lot is I would remember when I first started hiring trainers and I would look for the degrees and all the certifications. Oh, this trainer's got you know a master's, Same. a master's. They've got you know four national certifications. They're going to be so awesome. And then I get them and they're like terrible because they have no experience on taking all that information and then communicating that to an average person and then getting the results that they need. Mm. So, you know, that part is so important to becoming a good trainer that I'd want to get started in it as soon as I can, and then I'll learn along the way. Yeah, the most I ever learned, I'm going to be totally honest, that I ever learned as a personal trainer, aside from my own experience, was from other trainers, other health practitioners, mm -hmm. by far. I had acupuncturists that I worked next to, and I would observe and listen to the way they talked and communicated about their expertise, massage therapists. And I would do the same thing, physical therapists, other trainers, and then other practitioners that my clients would go to. So if I had a client that raved about their chiropractor or about their their doctor or about their therapist, let's say I worked with someone with you know body image issues and they also work with therapists, I would make sure 
to contact their practitioner, both to be able to service my client better, but also to ask them questions and listen because you know you're in your own bubble. You're a fitness person. You know you think you don't think you can learn from an acupuncturist about you know Chinese medicine and meridians. Of course, you're not going to communicate it the way they are, but you're going to hear and listen and learn. Mm. And that's where I learned most of the most valuable stuff that I ever learned as a trainer. Yeah, I think too that uh, there's a lot of different personalities that want to get into this industry. Uh, and I know myself even included in, in terms of like me being a little bit different than you guys. Uh, it, my, my weakness was something I worked on constantly. So I do agree with Adam. It's, it's, it's about getting in there and, and working on things that might make you uncomfortable. If that's, you know, communication thing, if that's, you know, small talk and like approaching people, if you're scared of that, like, and then you definitely need to find yourself an environment where you can, you know, you know, work on that. But at the same time, it does, it does help to have the education. Like, so, you know, I'm not, discounting the fact that like going the certification route and like getting uh you know a degree isn't going to help it's going to help at least have you know that basis of knowledge uh to then convey so when that comes mm -hmm. up you can you can relay the information you've learned to to these clients and look like a genius totally. uh but at the same time like you you really need to to get out there it's it's really important that you put yourself in the environment uh that makes you uncomfortable makes you work on all these things because it really is a one-to-one -one communication you have to have really good communication just because i know people are going to message uh us afterwards about what are good certifications uh nasm good general yeah. one yeah. cpps cpps excellent very very good one uh my favorite the czech health practitioner level one yep that's a good wellness uh certification so those are ones that i would recommend that are that are great places to look